Hello chaps, welcome along to the vlog. Just enjoying a nice mini keg of vacant gesture, don't you know? Mmm, it's very good. So, uh, a bit hazy, but very good nonetheless. So, we've been progressing with this um, coding for the can machine. So, I've got a couple of things I'd like to show you. Gemma. She's not one of them, of course. <laughs> um, I've put together... Come on, Gem, you're in shot anyway. Oh, no, I didn't think I thought I was hiding. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we've put together a, a little sequence on the plans for the hardware. So I'll show you that in a second. And also we've got five contributors, I think, thereabouts, um, for the software side of this machine. Uh, I'm very much appreciative, of course, for everyone who has chipped in and given us advice. Um, I'm aware that too many cooks may spoil the broth as it is, uh, you know, the old adage, but I think that the gang that we've got on this is a pretty good one. If anyone's got uh, any input that they'd like to contribute, then may I point you in the direction of a GitHub repository. There's Abigail. And... Um, I think we'll be able to uh, converse there a little bit. So let me flick the camera around and first show you what we've got happening with the software. And then um, I'll show you where the repository is. And then we'll have a look finally at the uh, CAD drawing that I've done of the machine itself. Um, or maybe I should do the machine first so you get an idea of what's wanted. Anyway, let's have a quick look. Okay, so here we have the breadboard and it is set up to a uh, specific layout and I can pop a PDF or a PNG image of how this is laid out here so you can see the schematic of it. But it's available at the um, GitHub address that I've shared in the description anyway if you want to go and have a closer look. So let's just plug our USB into the computer and power up the Arduino Uno. And you'll see that we've got a couple of lights on the top there. And uh, we've got four buttons here. This button here is a start button for the whole loop if you like that starts pushing cans under the can filler and then moves along to um, run through its process and instead of having a sensor for when each can is full because we're in beta testing if you like is it beta testing or alpha testing I don't know what does that mean making things up as I go along here uh, so the idea is that these buttons when I press them are to emulate the sensor of the can filler um, be going high, essentially 5 volts. So we've come up, I say we, I have not. Uh, the contributors on the, uh, on the project have come up with this idea. We're going to use, um, I can't remember what it's called now. Uh, it's called, we're going to use a Schmidt trigger to um, t try to dial out any false positives from the foam with a potentiometer in line so hopefully that's something that we can figure out uh, further down the line but for now we're just going to use these three buttons to kind of uh, represent when the beer is full and if I press the start button you'll see that that light represents the can push then this light should be on at the minute we're just working on that that's the fill rate that's the co2 and then this is the three solenoids opening up the filling valve. This one is the fill rail, so that should start high, so that should be on, and then drop down when it goes off. That's something that we're working on today. But you get the idea, and then you press these three buttons, and then that should indicate that the three cans of beer are full, and uh, the cycle should start to close down, lift the rail back up again, uh, push the cans forwards again uh, or, or in fact lift the rail up and then wait for uh, another input from the start button I think that's where we are anyway so you get the drift I'm sure 
uh, we're still very very early on in the development of this but we've decided as a group to make the whole thing open source so once I finished it you will be able to go on to the internet and make one of these yourself whether you just want to have a one headed filler or a ten headed filler there shouldn't be much jiggling to be done on the code anyway talking of the code I think what I want to do is just film the screen instead of opening. Ah, you know what? Let's open. Let's open some uh, some software so we can record the screen. Okay, folks. I hope this is working and uh, it makes sense to you all. We are recording here, so we may as well start on this page. This is actually the can filler which I've designed in SketchUp and as you can see we have along the top here this section is actually the fill rail so we can see we've got the fill tubes and they're supported on a completely adjustable um, matrix framework so once we've got thumb uh, wing nuts and bolts through here we can adjust these fill rods to any width uh, apart or any distance from the front to the back that we require. And the reason that I've done that is because what I'd like to see is um, this section here, uh, the track if you like, is also on a very similar kind of uh, system. So this track can move in and out. I don't know if I've uh, grouped all this together but uh, you'd be able to effectively move all of this track in and out like that. I could group it together I suppose if I just did that and that and then make it a group. So this will give you an idea. So this track will slide in and out like that allowing us to adjust the width of the track to accommodate skinny bottles, bigger kegs, uh, cans should I say, and then even right up to mini kegs. So that's the idea anyway with that section. And then if we pan up a little bit here and uh, we have a look at the actual fill rail itself, we can adjust this fill rail in a very similar fashion and I think I've grouped all this together. So uh, once we've got everything set up and we've got the track in the right position, we'll be able to um, use these rams here, which will be double action. So gas into the ram will make it extend and then gas out of the ram will make it descend. And that'll kind of give us this upwards and downwards motion like it's displaying there so uh, start of the cycle cans will push forwards from uh, this ram here that will push the cans forwards where uh, they need to be and then once they're in position we will be able to then uh, lower the fill heads into the cans um, all the solenoids will be based on top of this, uh, this rail, if you like. So we're going to have CO2 and fill solenoids. I think that's the best place for them. We'll see on the build. We'll see. I think the rams I've ordered are going to be strong enough. And then um, once the whole fill is completed, it will retract and move out of the way. Just like that and uh, basically reset back to normal uh, allowing us to utilize the can push again and indeed push the cans forwards and out of the way so that's how far we've got with the um, hardware and then of course we can at some point in the future put some paneling around to enclose it all so you don't kind of trap your fingers in there or anything like that all of this is going to be made out of uh, 20 by 20 by 3 millimeter angle stainless steel apart from 
these um, can rails, this stuff here, because I'm going to use some HDPE for the rails, so they're low friction. And then for the base, we're going to use uh, maybe a PVC or a HDPE insert. So each can size will have its own insert. And then when you want to uh, change the um, width of the can, so to speak, uh, it's just a simple case of uh, changing the size of that insert in there, you know. That should be simple enough to do. You just have the inserts stored alongside or behind the can machine whilst not in use. And you can cut an insert out of some PVC cover board or commonly known as fascia board, which is relatively cheap and uh, relatively hygienic. Or you could go for the um, HDP if you wanted to. So that's the hardware covered. This is by no means finished yet, but I think it gives you a pretty good idea of how it's going to look ultimately when it's finished. Uh, so let's have a look at the control circuit. Here you can see we've got the Arduino Uno here. Uh, the reason I used this was because it was readily available to me and it has analog and digital pins, quite a lot of them as well. Um, and I managed to order two of them and get them here pretty quickly for testing. So that's what I've done. So all of these LEDs are representing solenoids at the moment. In the future, those solenoids will be changed out with transistors or MOSFETs to be able to switch higher voltages to run the solenoids ultimately. But at the moment, a 5 volt signal is more than enough to switch a transistor and that's why we've represented each of the solenoids here with an LED. And then as I explained earlier on, we've got buttons in place of the input sensors, whether they're going to be a can sensor or just simply a push button on the front of the machine. And then for the beer fill, whether we go for the uh, Schmidt trigger or something different at the moment for testing, just having a push button like that's fine. And then finally, before I go, folks, uh, I would like to show you the, um, the GitHub repository that was set up very kindly uh, by Gearhard. And we've got some other contributors on there as well. Uh, the, there are four there so far, including me, but we're still waiting. Uh, I think there's another chap who's yet to join us, indeed, if he, if he still wants to. Um, this is by no means a closed group and uh, as I said the whole thing will be open source we've all agreed it's going to be open source when it's finished uh, including I will put the hardware um, SketchUp files on there as well uh, and the good thing about the hardware SketchUp files is that if I just uh, open this section up we can actually generate a cutting list uh, from the diagram if it wants to open up for us. Come on. Probably doesn't like the fact that I'm running screen recording software in the background as well. So hopefully that's still going. But here we go, look. So you know what I mean. Let's generate a parts list. And then all of a sudden you can see that if we use... Uh, 3 by 20 by 20 stainless steel. The reason I've done that is because if somebody wants to build it, they only have to order one type of stainless steel. Uh, oh, and there's some flat bar in there as well. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Let's just have a look. Where is that? Yeah, so we've got some flat bar in the design here at the bottom. But ultimately, you could still use the angle there if you wanted to. Um, it wouldn't be an issue. So, as I was saying, that is that, folks. Uh, this is the repository that we've got going. It's at github.com forward slash clune forward slash open beer filler. And you'll be able to follow our progress on there. I can't tell you when this is going to be finished because we don't bloody know. Um, but, yeah, I hope that helped. And uh, I hope that you're all going to find this project as interesting as uh, as we all are doing at the moment. 
Right folks, so I was just finishing off editing the video, there you can see the last screen that you just saw. And uh, I've been talking to the chaps on the uh, repository and we've gone a little bit further with the code. So Gearheart tonight has worked his magic and uh, yeah, indeed we have something that actually works now. So I'll see if I can talk you through it quick enough, but we'll just reset the Uno and have a look what's going to happen. So that light comes on immediately on startup. That is the fill rail, and that light is what's called high or on, if you like, in digital talk, ones and zeros. So that means that that fill rail is up at its highest height. So if we go forwards and we press the start button... Uh, I suppose if I came onto the screen, I could show you the uh, serial output. There we go. So that's waiting for the start button. It's checking all the time. So let's first have a look at the system as to what's going to happen. We press the start button. The can push sensor starts. That's pushing the cans underneath. The rail now has dropped and the can sensor is retracted. We've just purged with CO2 and now all three fill valves are open. So the cans at this stage will be filling up with beer. This button here, all these three buttons represent the can fill sensors. So as I press these buttons, you'll note that the lights go out as well, indicating that that can is full. Once I press this, then we'll see the light come on for the fill rail to lift again. And on its way out of the beer, we're going to have a tiny little squirt of CO2 to generate a little bit of foam. So when we put the lids of the cans on, we're putting the lids on top of foam filled with CO2. So there's no oxygen in there. And then the cycle will start again, waiting for us to press the start button. So this is the last fill sensor. And you'll just see the fill rail light come on and a brief flash of the CO2 light. And there's the CO2 and then everything's back up and the can push sensor is lit again and it's ready to go. There it goes, so round and round in a circle. One, two, three. And there we go. It's just waiting now, waiting for the next press. That automatically ran then. I'm not sure that must have been a glitch in the code. But you get the gist of it, folks. So it is working. So let me come up to uh, the serial print screen. If I just uh, clear the output here, we'll have a look from the start. So off shot, I'm just going to press the start button. Moving beer belt, as you can see, lowering the filler tubes, purging CO2, opening all beer inlets, and indeed those beer inlets are open. So let's close those inlets by activating the sensor. Filler tube one closed, filler tube two closed, all filler tubes closed, and it's gone back round to the start, waiting for the start button which I'll press again. There we go. So that's it, folks. I hope that was an interesting little insight into the development of this code for the can filling machine. And uh, I hope you'll join us for the rest of the journey as we move towards putting together a circuit board for this little thing and then building all of the hardware in the workshop at the brewery and then finally to ultimately filling cans. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Hit the sub button if you want to join us for this, and we'll see you on the next video.